Hi folks, welcome back. Hope you're keeping well. It was about, I think it was 1999. I've stood in the car park, very much a summer's day like today, only clearer. And we were stood there looking up at the sky and it was warm, it was clear. There was a, a breeze and it was lovely. It was really lovely. And then we lost light. It went dark, pitch black, like the middle of the night. And it was a solar eclipse, total solar eclipse. I think it was 1999. I've got flies and I've got things crawling on my cap and all sorts, so you'll have to forgive me if I keep firking. Is that, I hope that's the right word. Anyway, uh, as amazing as the, the, the loss of light was with the total solar eclipse, it was the, the other changes. It was the way that the, uh, the wind seemed to drop. Whether it did or not is another matter, I don't know, but it felt like it did. It felt as if the wind stopped. It just went eerily calm. We lost all light, it went dark, and the drop in temperature was incredible. It was just an amazing experience. But the thing I noticed more than that was the birds stopped. The birds were singing nothing like this. This is amazing. This morning they're absolutely banging. But that particular day, it went silent. You could hear a pin drop. It was so quiet. People were stopped. It was an eerie, spooky, incredible, incredible thing. Well, we've not got that today. <laughs> But what we have got is around a 30% solar eclipse here in the UK, central England. Now I'm doing a little bit of an experiment today. I want to do a bit of an experiment. I always promised myself I'd come into the trees for a solar eclipse. I didn't realise back then they only happen once in a lifetime, a total solar eclipse, unless you're prepared to travel the, the planet for them. But um, the next one here is like 2090. So unless they can fully integrate us into machines before then, I doubt I'm going to make that number. So uh, I saw my only one, I, I think, unless I can, unless I can do some, some travel. But anyway, just for the record, if anybody's curious, I think the next significant solar eclipse here in the UK is 2026. We might make that one if we're lucky. And I believe it's about 93%. So it's a significant one. We should definitely notice it. Anyway, back to my experiment. What I want to do is I want to set the GoPro up and I want to give it a perspective of the woodland where it's quite open, somewhere like this, because there's quite good light coming in from up in that direction. And I want to have it run just for five or 10 seconds, about an hour before the eclipse peak arrives because it will be a progressive thing obviously and then what I want to do is I want to have the GoPro running in the same sort of spot with the same sort of light over five or ten seconds of the peak of the partial solar eclipse today hopefully we'll get to see a change to the bird song and a change to the light as I say it's only about 30 percent so oh we've got some blue stuff hey you never know we might get lucky if it just passes at the right time Now the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to I'd like to collect just two or three nice shots from today. So I came in from a long way over in that direction, over there somewhere, and I've walked all the way along here, probably about two, two and a half miles, made my way through the forest and along this trail. I've, I've took about two dozen shots because all of the canopies have just gone boom in this last, last week or 10 days or so. A lot of the ancient trees were really struggling with canopies. They're not anymore. If they're going to grow canopies, they have. And it's so full, it's so rich. It's like walking into a new place. It's like a different forest, it really is. So many more things of interest, so much more to isolate that's out there in the, the gaps between the, uh, the branches and the leaves and the light. It, it's all such a heady mix, it really is. It's, it's a wonderful thing this morning. It really is spectacular. So I think because I've got so many remnants of trees and interesting little bits and bobs flowing around, there's one, two, a burnt out stump, three, big tree down there, four, little flock of silver birch just over there. I quite like the look of that. There's this guy. He's ace. Nice, nice little tree here. This, uh, if I was a little bit smaller, I'd climb in there, but I don't think I'd fit. Nice tree with some beautiful gnarly branches. A little stump behind it. There's lots. There's lots and lots and lots and lots. Sun's up there. Pardon? As I find any compositions, 
I'll bring you back, explain it, and I'll try and share a, just a little gallery at the end. Nothing huge this week, just two or three shots. I say that, there might be 200, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, there's not an obvious composition here. It looks a bit cluttered, doesn't it? We've got three trees. We've got this uh, silver birch here with these few ferns around the base. We've got this old, dead, beautiful trunk behind it. And then off in the distance behind that, we've got the oak that's up and leaning out with a beautiful squirrel on that branch. I'll go and have a look at that in a minute. So, no obvious composition, but to me, I call it a glancing blow shot. We have one primary subject, either entering or exiting frame in the foreground, and then a secondary subject that sits almost as a support. There's a, there's a relationship there between your primary subject and your secondary subject. And for me, I just love the relationship between these two trunks. I love the fact that this is dead, this is alive. That bows to the right, that bows to the left, and we have this V shape in the centre of frame. So I look at things like this and automatically I'm drawn to that V. I forget about the, the subjects and, and I think about what would make a composition. So how can we form something out of this here? Uh, I've taken a shot and I'll, I'll take another because this light's changing as you can see the sun's coming up. Essentially, I've gone portrait. It's taking in that central section with the important factor being this right hand margin. I don't want the silver birch in frame. I want that gone. So it comes down this edge and it just takes in that fern from the bottom there. So that gives me the right hand edge of frame. The V marks the center of my frame. I'm portrait remember, so I'm, I'm, I'm tall and narrow. And then the left hand margin avoids that, that silver birch. So it, it just extracts the value for me out the center of frame. A glancing blow or a Victory V, or any number of other things you could call it. I just like it, it's pretty. I like the relationship between subjects, objects, alive, dead, rich, poor, yellow, green, black, white, any contrasts, whatever we can find. So that's the first one. I'll pop that up on screen. Um, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below to the principle of that composition. Be interested to know your thoughts. See you in a bit. <sighs> this sun, man. Sky's clear. And as we get that partial solar, if it stays this bright, we might notice it a little bit more. I'm thinking more light, more shade. I don't know. I don't know how it will work. It's, it's really quite an experiment. <sighs> so, it's now 22 minutes past 10. So we've got less than an hour. I wish I, could, oh, I wish I could get a shot up there. There's been a, a plane pass through and there's a, a contrail. Looks like it's cutting right through the sun. I don't think the GoPro will catch it. Oh, the clouds just go in through there now. Hey, I tried. <laughs> Sun's gonna get blocked in in a second. We're going into shade. I've spent a lot more time lately looking up into the canopy to where the canopy meets the sky. I'm back to that contrast thing again. I know I am, it's probably the theme for today, but it, it's just lovely, especially when the leaves have come back and you're into that, not quite knowing what it looks like up there. So you get parts of trunks and the parts of trunks that I'm talking about are the ones that are exposed to the light because they're so close to the canopy, there's gaps and those gaps produce some nice light. Now looking at this particular tree, it is huge. I can't I can't capture it with a 50 mil lens, but up in the top of the canopy, there's blue sky behind. I've got the sun over to my right, and the light's getting through to just highlight some little twirly branches that are up in the top of the the canopy. And I think it makes for just a nice kind of abstract shot, but no less. I'm going to give it a go. So again, I'll go into a portrait orientation. We've got this beautiful blue sky over here on the left. It, it was blue up here. The cloud, as you can see, is moving quite quickly. And the light was getting through a lot more than it is now. So the light was coming through from this side with the sun up here. And it was just catching the curvature of some twisted branches that are up there at the top. So I would basically form a composition inside the canopy, taking as little in of the sky as I can. Just a nice central composition highlighting what was the light coming through the canopy into the top of the tree. Just an abstract shot of a beautiful canopy. 
and I like that stuff. The, the, I find it quite atmospheric sometimes. You get some beautiful, beautiful stuff up there. It gives me a stiff neck and it makes me go dizzy from time to time. I've been wobbling around like a drunken sailor this morning. <laughs> Sorry sailors, I'm sure you're not all drunkards. Um, the other thing that I saw, which I have taken a shot of, I'm not going to talk through the composition, but it was that same tr trunk as before. It was this, this dead trunk I've walked through here. And as I came through, you see these two silver birch, these, these thin young silver birch trunks. Well, that dead tree actually was between them. It's on an angle, so it's not the greatest of compositions. But all I did is I just took a quick snap there to, to try and form that centralized composition. If it came out okay, I'll pop it up now with um, a picture of this canopy. And if it didn't, I'll just put a picture of this canopy. <laughs> right, onwards for another. And that's what's happened to that beautiful blue sky. It's gone cooler though, I don't mind that. Right folks, I'm going to try and find another composition and then I'm going to get ready to settle in for what will be the peak of this year's 30 to 35% partial solar eclipse. The birds are going quiet already. I don't know if that's just coincidence or not. It is, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Onwards, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye for now. It's uh, fast approaching 2211, so I'm going to get uh, another quick clip of the light now. Uh, I'm sure we've got a chimpanzee in here somewhere. It's gone grey, very, very grey again, cloud-wise. We've got some humans floating around, which doesn't help when you're recording the ambient sound. But that's my bad because I chose this area, so we'll have to hope they pass within the next 20 minutes. Uh, this composition, I love this. I absolutely adore it. I love it all anyway. Um, it's like an upside down landscape. And what I mean by this, um, I know I'm sharing some crazy out there concept. This is another example. Typical landscape shot, you've got foreground, mid-ground, background, and you layer through the frame. This is upside down. So the overhanging leaves are our foreground. The tree trunk is our mid-ground, primary focal area, and then the forest is our background. So four, mid, back, upside down, because it's normally four, mid, back. Straightforward composition, center of frame, probably portrait and landscape. I'll do both because there's a nice trunk over here I'd like to get in frame. So I'll probably waddle over here a little bit and uh, go landscape, centralize on this overhanging leafage and go portrait as well. Right, I'm out of here. Let's get ready for this light. I'll see you in a bit. Bye for now. Okay then, folks. Um, I'm gonna put up the uh, experimental clips now. If everything goes to plan, there'll now be three clips. Five to 10 seconds from an hour before the solar eclipse, five to 10 seconds during the peak of the solar eclipse, and five to 10 seconds from an hour after the solar eclipse has passed. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you could sense any difference in the environments. I'll try and bump the audio slightly and uh, I'll try and make sure that each video clip has been edited exactly the same. So it'll be an equal view of this environment. And I've literally been in and around this space all the time. I haven't moved from this area in the last two hours. So it's all from within a 50 foot radius of this spot. So uh, I'll see you in a bit. Bye for now. That was a, it's about five minutes 
after the peak. So the sun's just about returned now. And you can just see the lights up from where it was. Very noticeable to the naked eye. So 30% it's worth coming out for because you can get those predictable times when you lose half light. And if it's in bright sunny conditions, for photography, you could spend your morning just preparing your composition, get yourself to where you want to be, and then snap away when the moment's right. So it's, uh, it's one of the few times we can predict a reduction in bright sunlight. That and every night time, of course, I mean, there's always that. <laughs> oh, God, little thing just sat there on the woods on its own. Like some sort of a standing stone, even though it's made of wood. I'm not going to talk through a third composition. I think that's enough for one video. Um, so I know I've got a fly or two. Um, I know I've got one or two compositions and I'm sure I've got a few reasonable shots in there that are worth sharing. As I said, I'm not going to put a huge gallery up. I'll just put a small selection, keep the video size down if I can, and uh, hopefully be able to just share with you that transition and, and difference between the normal light and then that... Uh, semi solar eclipse light it was uh yeah quite magical loved it i hope you got to see it wherever you are and if you're in the part of the world where you got the full ring of fire god bless you that was epic that really was breathtaking and uh 2026 i think in the uk i think that's right i think it's 2026 for a 93 percent coverage of a solar eclipse next so that's going to be one to set for the old uh, calendars but for this week, I'm going to say that's it, folks. I'm out of here. So thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. If they're gonna grow, if they're gonna grow, go grow, if they're gonna go, go grow.